Welcome to BA Bootcamp. My name is Luc Vermaas and together with Gert Zwedek, we ensure that you stay informed of the latest developments in the field of business analysis. We combine different theoretical approaches with our extensive practical experience from the field so that you immediately leave our sessions with tangible tips and ideas to put in practice in your daily work. Have fun watching and if you want to be staying informed in our latest videos, follow us on YouTube. Yeah, thank you again for, for joining this third episode, uh, the third episode of the Babok Entangled series. Uh, today is all about strategy analysis. Uh, for the people who know the Baba who would probably think, hey, why are we touching this uh, uh, chapter today? Uh, because it normally comes in a bit later, but we will uh, talk about our decision uh, on that a little bit later. Uh, just to give you an idea where we are today, because of course it's uh, it's quite a series. Uh, it, nine episodes the 400 pages babok can be quite tough we try to uh, stick to it uh, chapter for chapter and today we are uh, at episode three strategy analysis which will also uh, yeah show you some techniques uh, which is normally a specific chapter in the in the babok uh, but we like to really combine the technique with the tasks because then uh, they really truly come to life and you get a better context of uh, when to use certain models and uh, when you, you can apply other models as well. So where are we today in the in the in the world of the Babo? So our first two episodes, they were about key concepts and perspectives. They are already finished uh, for, for, for anyone who is interested to learn more about that. Feel free to visit uh, our YouTube page, BA Bootcamp. There you can find the other episodes uh, as well. Today will be our first episode about what we call the knowledge areas. Uh, uh, the Babok has identified six knowledge areas, which are, well, basically the key uh, uh, ingredients for a, a good business analysis, and especially also uh, subcategorized in then tasks that are part of that specific knowledge area. Uh, as you can see, uh, we start with number four today, because Talking about strategy analysis, uh, we really start about uh, or talk about a starting point. Uh, so we, if you look at chapter number one, business analysis, planning and monitoring, then you would obviously think, well, it often starts with planning uh, uh, your work, which is true. Um, but if you look at strategy analysis, basically is the starting point for the initiatives that BAs will be assigned to in order for them to start planning and monitoring those specific assignments that are part often of a earlier defined strategy. And that's why we want to start with strategy analysis first, as we think it's really a backbone, like it can be a starting point um, for many other business analysts that start on maybe separate initiatives that are part of the strategy of a company, but at least give you the context of understanding that strategy. So that's why we start with this uh, uh, first. I don't know, uh, Gert, if you have any uh, additions to that, because it was a de deliberate decision to start with this one first. Yeah, no, it's it's exactly what I was uh, trying to say. So uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see, we will have the next few episodes uh, on the different Babok knowledge areas. Today is all about strategy analysis, which has four key tasks. Uh, again, repeating it uh, because if we're talking about the Babel, the knowledge areas are domains of which tasks are, be, are to be performed to uh, get input and with that input perform these tasks to generate the output that is then required to continue with the next task. Uh, so therefore you have a, a clear EGU mode model uh, that is uh, used in, uh, in the Babel. Uh, there's input you have certain enablers, you have certain guidelines, which can be your, your tools and your models to be to be used. Uh, and that then in the end results in output. Those tasks that are part of strategy analysis are the four defined here. So it, it basically starts with analyzing your current state. Okay? What is the situation we're in today? Then you need to uh, set a, I would say, dot on the horizon. Okay? What is the defined future state? Where do we want to go to? But at the same time, you also know that no road is as uh, paved uh, as it comes to, uh, to strategies. 
So you also have to assess what are some of the risks and what are some of the bears and the holes in the road when we are executing this strategy, what could happen? Uh, so therefore, it's really important to look at those risks. And with that in mind, you can define your strange change strategy. And uh, just to, to emphasize uh, a change strategy, it sounds uh, very big, and that is also, it's, it's, it's sometimes a tough uh, uh, content. Therefore, we have tried to use uh, today with, a, with an example use case, which Gek will talk about a bit uh, more later. Uh, but to, to just untangle a little bit more the word strategy and, 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 and analysis. So basically, what the purposes of strategy analysis, it's basically it defines the most effective way to apply capabilities of an enterprise. And with capabilities, you should think of yeah, resources, uh, budget, uh, everything that is available within a company uh, it, in order to reach desired goals and objectives. Uh, so that is basically what, what we're trying to do, is we're trying to, ana to analyze whether we have the capabilities to reach the goals and objectives. If not yet ready set, then we will also help analyze what should be the goals and objectives to reach certain uh, higher level objectives. Uh, so it's basically asking uh, or answering the questions of what are we going to do, how are we going to achieve this, and then making sure that we assign the appropriate resources, time and budget on a high level perspective. And that will help provide direction, focus and structure for the people that need to execute on that strategy. So for instance, improve customer satisfaction could be a strategy, right? We want to improve our customer service department is part of that. So that could be a project in itself that will then start maybe you as a business analyst to get that assignment. Okay, we need to improve our customer satisfaction, which probably needs to involve in, I don't know, creating new solutions for a customer service department. Then you can be part of that project and start your planning and analysis of what needs to be done in that part of the project. But at least now you also have context of the scope of the strategy analysis of why are we actually doing this? which will also help you plan your work going forward. So again, strategy can be on different levels. I mean, strategy always, always is thought of like, oh, people in a boardroom, they only talk, think about strategy, but don't let, uh, let you fool yourself by that because strategy is e equally as important as, for instance, a roadmap for your product, right? That's also a strategy. And what, what features are we going to build? Uh, because then you also need to decide, okay, what do my customers want? Oh, then we have to adjust our product strategy to make sure that we include these features in our roadmap. Uh, so I think strategy is not something that is like to perceive as being a far from everybody's bad show. No, it's actually part of every project uh, that I think as a, as a good business analyst, you ask the questions, uh, what is the strategy behind the project we are doing? Because that will help you in the end move forward as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, some of the details that I find important to mention for strategy analysis. Um, well, I'm going to uh, uh, hand over the word now to you, uh, Gert, talk a bit more mm -hmm. about uh, uh, the business analysis value spectrum. Thank you, Luc. Um, yeah, this slide, um, you see some kind of sequence in which the three knowledge areas uh, can be done. So what you see here is the the BA value spectrum, starting at the left at potential and moving to the right to actual. And uh, what we're talking about today is, of course, strategy analysis, which is the, the most left part of this picture. Um, you always start with needs. You need to know what you uh, need as a company. Um, af after that, um, uh, you want to come up with a solution that uh, meets those needs. And these are the starting points for the rest of your, well, mention this uh, a project uh, in which you start uh, detailing your requirements and your design, which is part of the knowledge area requirement analysis and design definition. Uh, we do that in a later, later episode. Uh, and after that, you have solution evaluation in which you, well, the word uh, says it already, you evaluate your uh, solution. So 
you come up with, uh, for instance, some IT system, and then you start evaluating uh, whether that uh, is the solution you uh, you really want. Um, this may uh, sound a bit waterfall-esque. I don't know if that's a good word, but um, uh, uh, actually, especially in, in agile uh, projects, there will be iterations. So things will still move from left to right, of course, but it will be done iteratively. So uh, once you have evaluated a solution, you may come up with some strategy uh, changes, solution scope changes, because that's what Agile is all about. And you uh, do the, the work again. So you adjust your requirements, you adjust your design, <clears throat> and then you evaluate the solution over and over. So that's the circle you see on top here. Um, that's what we're talking about in, in the last episode, is that you have um, three planning horizons, the strategy horizon, the initiative horizon, and the delivery horizon. And uh, actually, that's the same as you see here. So, uh, of course, you, also, you always need to make sure you do the right things. And I always uh, um, emphasize this in, in trainings, of course, that the, the business analyst is a, uh, is a role that is uh, especially uh, um, um, it has its value in making sure you do the right things. So effectivity is is a very important thing for the for the analyst. Um, well, I think that's enough for this one. Uh, the next one uh, in this first task, analyze current state. It's all about finding out what is going on in the enterprise. It's important you map only those elements that are relevant for the situation. And this can actually be a challenging task what to model and what not. Uh, one important input here is are the needs the business has at some moment in time. Uh, together with elicitation results, you can see on top, um, they will be transformed into a current state description and a set of business uh, requirements you see uh, here at uh, the output. Uh, the business requirements will be used as input by the next knowledge area defined future state and the current state description will also be used by the task and many other uh, tasks as you can see in, in this picture. So actually this is uh, EGU, uh, you see the EGU model here, input, um, uh, guidelines, uh, enablers uh, and you see the output. And the outputs will be used by other tasks. Um, what you can see here, the, the, the elicitation results on top are uh, output of one of the elicitation uh, tasks in the knowledge area, elicitation and collaboration. So here you see uh, there's actually not a one starting point as we mentioned earlier. So uh, of course you will have some needs as a company uh, you may have uh, had a workshop, for instance, with uh, a key stakeholders, and uh, these inputs are needed to find out what your current situation is and also what your business requirements are. Um, as with all tasks, you can choose many different techniques that help you doing your work as a BA. Uh, you may have workshops, for instance, uh, brainstorm sessions, uh, balance scorecards, uh, metrics and KPIs and process models, to name a few. Um, so uh, these are these are important techniques that may help you find your current state description. Uh, your current state description may be uh, an organizational structure and culture uh, description. It may be capability and process maps. Uh, it may have to do with technology and infrastructure. Uh, it may uh, um, be policies or business architecture or internal assets. Uh, and it even may be external influencers as we may uh, see in the next slide. So all these are elements you have to use when doing this analysis task. So uh, you have your input, 
you start doing things and that will lead to an output. Okay, the SWOT analysis uh, is the task we have chosen for, uh, the technique we have chosen for this task, um, because it's, it's very powerful. Every company has organization has uh, to do with an environment. Uh, and all, uh, always there will be an, an external analysis, there will be an internal analysis, and they will be do, uh, done uh, both at the same time. So first look outside and then look inside or vice versa. Um, that's what SWOT is about. Uh, the strengths and weaknesses you will find when doing an, an internal analysis, the opportunities and threats you will find when doing an external analysis. Um, this is very important to find out what you what your strengths are as a, as a company in your current situation and what your weaknesses are. Uh, and it also uh, leads to uh, yeah, what are the threats that come from outside the company and what opportunities uh, do exist for this company. Um, Something uh, the business needs can relatively be easy when the company has strengths to realize. And of course, they can be uh, a challenge when this is not the case. So if you have uh, business needs and you are not strong enough to, to meet those needs, you may have a problem. So that's what you do when you analyze your current state. Uh, let, let's have a look at um, the next slide. With, with BCL. So BCL uh, stands as a, 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 a fictional example of a car company um, and that still manufactures ICE vehicles, uh, which stands for petrol and gasoline cars. But it has um, realized that many competitors have gone electric the last couple of years. Um, so um, that, that really is a challenge for, for BCL. So if you have a look at the next slide, yeah, here you uh, uh, might see, okay, well, this is an opportunity for the company because many people want to switch from a fuel car to an electric car. Or you may say, well, this is a problem if we don't respond in time to the paradigm shift in electric driving. Uh, both are business needs. So if you want to know what a business need is, is either an opportunity or it is a problem. Um, better to have an opportunity. So uh, that's that's the, the link with the last slide where we're talking about SWOT. Um, some opportunities get along your way and um, well, if you're in time and you have the strength, then you can uh, produce some business requirements. Uh, and the business requirements um, are in this case, producing and selling electric cars uh, mobility as a service, for instance, when when people uh, want to uh, to go on a holiday, they may even uh, well uh, rent uh, another car, for instance, that can drive uh, further than the electric cars they have. Uh, you can also think about other services like a multi-year installment plan. Um, these are uh, typically business requirements that trace with the business needs. So business needs are. Uh, more vague, I would say, than business requirements. Uh, and business requirements are uh, a step in between the business needs and the business objects ob objectives we will see later in this episode. So use you can use a SWOT analysis to find uh, your strengths uh, and to find what the opportunities are. The next uh, uh, task is, um, well, uh, that that's about the future state. That's the, the dot on the horizon uh, Luke was talking about. And as you can see here, uh, you have the input is business requirements. So the business requirements from the last task, the, the, the uh, analyze current state, you use here as an input to, um, yeah, to define your business objectives, to define your future state description and to define your potential value. Um, first, uh, there are business objectives, um, and these are clearly defined smart business goals. 
so that they can be verified that they have been achieved. That's why they need to be smart. Uh, second, there will be a future state description uh, of the, uh, the organization or part of the organization. Uh, and there's an output potential value because the new state has to be an improvement compared to the current state. Uh, the potential value shows uh, yeah, that, that the change is an improvement. Uh, as in the current state, you can also map um, the, the organizational structure and culture, as you see, the capabilities and processes, the technology and infrastructure, policies, business architecture, internal assets, uh, and you also have to identify assumptions if you have them. Um, I think that's very important uh, because assumptions often lead to, to problems if you don't verify them. So if you do assumptions, you should also always uh, verify, uh, uh, verify them. Um, you now uh, may, yeah. Um, then, and then there's of course potential value. So the potential value is, uh, yeah, well, the, the thing I mentioned before. So uh, I think that's enough, Luke, you, you were right. <laughs> yeah, okay, when it's, uh, when it's about uh, analyzing your, your, your futures, or your defining your future state, you can also use different uh, techniques. Uh, many of them are uh, the same as the, uh, the, the first task uh, we were talking about. Um, but uh, you can also use the business model canvas and uh, that provides an understanding of the value proposition that the enterprise satisfies for its customers and the critical factors in delivering that value and the resulting cost and revenue streams. So oftentimes you start with the customer segments on the right and you do uh, yeah, well, uh, have some kind of brainstorm session with other people so you can combine this uh, uh, nicely in a, in a workshop environment. Everybody uh, is brainstorming, well, what kind of customer segments do we have? Uh, and the, in the end, you will come with some consensus concerning your customer segments. So who are my customers? In what segments uh, do they uh, exist? What are the customer relationships with uh, our customers? Uh, uh, what kind of channels do we use to communicate with our customers? That's the, the right three parts of this uh, model canvas. And on the left, you see uh, partners you use. Of course, uh, BCL, as with other companies, works together with partner organizations. Uh, to develop new technology uh, concerning electric cars. Um, that's an important uh, thing. So the strategic partners you choose and uh, you, you will realize, of course, that you, um, you will have different partners when building uh, electric cars than building ice cars because uh, you don't need exhaustion pipes anymore, for instance. So your new situation will look much different than your current situation. And using the business model canvas, you can um, see that as, as uh, a group of stakeholder, what, uh, what changes will be needed for the near future. Your key resources, so what, um, yeah, well, your human resources, of course, and your, um, um, well, who, who do you need to make the step towards your future within the people within your organization? And on top of that, the key activities. So what you're going to do uh, as uh, people working for your company and also uh, what you do with your partners. Uh, and together, all these things, they come together in the value proposition. So the value proposition, you actually, is the, that's the most important part, I think, is actually what is um, so special you do um, comparing yourself with, the, with your competitors, for instance. In what way would um, 
your customer choose you as a company? Would they choose BCL, for instance, uh, and not some other com company? So th that's what makes your your um, uh, company special. And of course, then on the on the bottom you see cost structure and revenue stream. So that's more about finance. Of course, you need to have some uh, business case. Uh, the the business case is often uh, the balance between what things cost and what things uh, will uh, lead to to money. So the revenue you have as a company, and um, hopefully uh, the balance will be on the side of the revenue, of course. Uh, so it's all about uh, delivering value to customers. Uh, and of course, not only that, it's also about um, being uh, making making money, of course. So this is a very powerful technique you can use uh, when uh, defining your future state. And then, of course, there's the objectives I was talking about earlier. So you can, um, when you have your business requirements, uh, this step will lead to business objectives, as I was, uh, uh, as I told you before. And uh, BCL has come up with these objectives. And of course, these are all uh, fictitious. Uh, the production of the model Electro 2 in November this year. Uh, the sales will be in May next year. And you see that also for the hydro model, which is a hydrogen car. Uh, it's still a bit of a question mark. Um, and also there's uh, possibilities of rental of the models that are being built. Uh, and uh, an interest-free loan over five years as an extra service. So these are ac actual, um, these are smart goals. These are objectives. And of uh, the objectives, you can say, well, we achieved the, these objectives or we didn't. So that's a very important outcome of the second task of this knowledge area. And then there's risks. Uh, yeah, uh, what is a risk? Um, it's an undesirable uh, uh, consequence of internal and external forces on the enterprise during a transition um, or uh, once in the future state. So um, it would be naive to put a dot on the horizon and not realizing it may have some risks. So the 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 road to the point on the horizon uh, may have some pitfalls. So uh, better recognize them in advance <laughs> before they actually occur. So that's what uh, risk management is all about. Um, 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 yeah, well, but there will be a lot of unknown risks at the start of a BA initiative. And BAs may contribute to gradually map them. Uh, and also constraints, assumptions, and dependencies can be analyzed for risks uh, and sometimes should be managed at risk themselves. Uh, BAs also help estimate a total risk level from the aggregated set of risks, indicating the probability and the potential impact for the risk being assessed. And they cooperate with stakeholders to manage the risks once they occur. So we see that in the next slide. Uh, these, yeah, that this is okay. You can go to the next one. Here you see um, some risks. Of course, these are also uh, fictitious. Um, mentioned for the BCL case. So people still prefer traditional uh, ICE cars instead of electric cars. Um, because, yeah, well, uh, electric driving, I think this is um, less and less a problem with electric cars because they, they drive further than uh, a couple of years ago. Um, well, uh, major fuel brands all move to the fast charge stations. So um, uh, BCL has um, also a plan to have their own uh, charging stations. 
Uh, and of course, that would be extra income for BCL. Uh, but if they all move to fast charging stations, uh, then you lose competition. Yeah. Uh, fire hazards. So that's a, uh, a completely different kind of risks, uh, but it has it deals with a lot of energy. So uh, well, nobody wants fire, of course. So that is a risk that needs to be managed. Uh, too few charging stations to convince the larger crowd to move to electric driving. Um, about five percent worldwide is currently. Uh, uh, for um, the five percent of the sold vehicles worldwide is an electric vehicle. So um, <clears throat> to to make sure a larger crowd will buy um, an electric car, uh, you need to to manage this risk. I would say. Um, the next one, well, the 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 most obvious technique for this task is of course risk analysis and management technique. And uh, that all starts with the identification of the risks. Well, we've seen that in the last slide. And uh, if you've done that, you can start calculating the risk. That's the second step in which you um, assess the probability and the impact of each risk. And uh, well, often, oftentimes you multiply these two and then you have the, the size of the risk. Uh, so on top you see risk A has the highest probability times impact uh, assessment. So that would be the, the biggest risk um, followed by the other three. So um, very important, I think, to, to know what risks uh, you will have uh, on your journey um, and uh, to be able to manage these risks. And you, you can do that by... Um, thinking about countermeasures so that's also the, the the management part of risks so first you identify them then you analyze them and then you start managing them once they occur so you need to to think about what to do when a risk becomes a problem or when a risk occurs as an issue and you can avoid them by lower the probability you can also mitigate it by lowering the impact you can transfer the risk or you can choose to accept the risk. Uh, well, uh, transfer typically is uh, an insurance is uh, a nice example of that. Uh, lowering the probability. Well, if you can do that, that would be a very nice uh, strategy to, to choose. Or you can, of course, lower the impact or accept. OK, the last task of this knowledge area is define a uh, defined change strategy. Uh, as we expressed in an earlier episode, the BA is involved in business change initiatives that will lead to improvements within the enterprise. There can, there can only be an improvement when the future situation is deeply communicated with stakeholders. That's why you see the stakeholder engagement approach on top. On the left. This is uh, besides the other outputs from the other tasks, uh, an important input for this task. So beside the description of the current state, uh, the description of the future state and the risks, you also need to have a stakeholder engagement approach to show you need to know um, yeah, which, which stakeholders you have uh, and which are important and uh, how you deal with all these stakeholders. And actually that's uh, a subject we will talk about next episode. So next episode we will talk about uh, business analysis planning and monitoring. And one of the outcomes of that task is the stakeholder engagement approach. Uh, yeah, well, these, these you need to, to do a good uh, defining your change strategy. Um, well, let's let's first have a look at the, the term solution. Uh, the term solution is defined as the outcome of a change that allows an enterprise to satisfy a need. And often multiple solution options will be available. 
Uh, and uh, as part of the change strategy, the best option is justified and selected. Uh, the solution scope defines the boundaries of the solution and is described in enough detail to enable stakeholders to understand which new capabilities the change will deliver. It also describes how the proposed solution enables the future state goals. The solution scope might evolve throughout an initiative as more information is discovered. And, and we mentioned that in the, in the last session. So the, the solution scope might be described in different ways. Um, for instance, uh, as um, organizational structures, as business capabilities, uh, as technology, for instance, a new IT system, uh, some new business rules or business processes, but it could also be data resources or new knowledge or skills. A change strategy is a high level plan of key activities and events that will be used to transform the enterprise from the current state into the future state. The change strategy clearly describes the nature of the change in terms of context of the change, uh, identified alternative change strategies, justification for why a particular change strategy is the best approach, investment and resources required to work towards the future state, how the enterprise will realize value after the solution is delivered, key stakeholders in the change, and the transition states along the way. So if we look, uh, also you see the enterprise readiness assessment here. Um, of course, uh, you need to make uh, sure your, your, uh, your enterprise is um, capable of uh, doing all the things it wants to do. So that's the enterprise readiness assessment. Yeah, maybe I can uh, give a short example from from this uh, yes. my, my 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 job, right? So basically, um, what we're trying to achieve is an an harmonized uh, process across uh, different countries. Um, but in order to do that, uh, we have we are now operating in 32 countries. Uh, they are all you know having their own ways of working, having their own architecture. Uh, they have, uh, of course, all, all their, their, their own processes. So to go from a, let's say, more local approach to a, a more centralized approach, we need to first uh, do indeed a proper gap analysis and that uh, has so-called enterprise readiness assessments to see, okay, how is the situation today? Uh, we all know where we want to go. We also know what the solution of the scope is in which this in this case it's about doing sales in a harmonized way in 32 different countries so it's about, talking about sales management um, and country by country are performing this readiness assessment to see the gaps on the different areas of organizational differences architectural differences and process differences all are being the uh, uh, combined in a so-called readiness assessments uh, that gives a score in order for uh, management to decide on the roadmap and priorities, which then indeed impacts the change strategy and maybe saying, well, we start with country A and then go to B, but instead knowing now the information and the effort is maybe uh, uh, less valuable to start with country A and, and let's instead start with country C, um, is then basically coming from that analysis and, and impacts the strategy in that uh, in that way. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the next slide. Um, yeah, uh, well, for, for, I was talking about the the change strategy for for BCL. The the change strategy you see here, uh, pictures of Volkswagens. <laughs> I couldn't think of fictional cars, so uh, Volkswagen actually is in the same situation. Uh, Volkswagen. Uh, doesn't build the 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 old uh, T vans uh, you see on the left. <laughs> I mean that's the that's the 60s, but they still do that, uh, and um, they come up with a with a big transition plan to move to a future state that uh, builds only electric cars. And you see that on the right. So the the picture on the right is is actual. That will come on the market probably this or or next year. I'm looking forward to that. Um, 
So same is true for BCL, the fictional uh, company. Uh, the context of the change for BCL is the whole organization. Um, they certainly have thought about different change strategies and have come up with one or maybe even more. Uh, investment and resources required to work towards the future state, um, well, they, they certainly will need to acquire new personnel with the right skills and will invest millions or even billions of euros in the transition. So um, <clears throat> realize that this is a completely different uh, kind of sport building ice vehicles or building electric vehicles, you need completely different processes. You need different people. You need different skills. You maybe need different uh, organization structure. Everything for a BCL will, will change in the near future. That's why the context is, uh, is very big. <clears throat> Uh, the change strategy will also describe uh, how you realize the value. So I'm sure they have an idea what money will be generated in the future. Um, the key stakeholders in the change will be, of course, new suppliers and other customers, maybe. Uh, and of course, uh, new personnel. Um, you may have different transition states along the way. So for BCL, there will be a gradual transition from fuel models to electric models. And actually, that's what Volkswagen does at the moment. They still have Golfs and, and Polos. And at the same time, they're building the ID3 and ID4 models. You could see on the European Championship uh, soccer, and uh, that was uh, a big, um, you could see the little, little cars moving the, the the ball at the start of the game so that's all the marketing uh, volkswagen has uh, as many other companies <clears throat> um, <clears throat> of course this means uh, bcl like Volkswagen, has a massive solution scope that consists of a combination of elements as i said like changes in processes skills organization structures and and responsibilities the next slide is a technique you can use to find out what you need to do, uh, business capabilities. What do we have to do as a company in the in the future? Well, for BCL, that will be selling electric vehicles. Um, that will uh, be selling uh, mobility as a service. Of course, you need to market that. Uh, you need to uh, make sure you have maybe a completely different market um, because it's it's a different kind of product. You need to uh, to do service to customers. Uh, you do uh, procurement of of merchandise and and uh, tech knowledge. Uh, I'm I'm convinced that uh, building cars will be more and more um, IT that uh, these are IT on wheels. So the, the old days are over, I think. And that means you, you need to come up with completely different business capabilities than you did before. So the business capabilities describe what you do as a company at the very highest level. And uh, underneath those, you will have your, your value streams and your, your business processes. So this is the the very highest level of what will be different for our company. Uh, and that's part, of course, of your change strategy. Next slide, please. OK, um, well, you can see here the, the, the same picture as we saw before. So this is more some kind of uh, resume uh, picture uh, summary L on the left you see uh, task 6.1 so analyze current state comes up with business needs uh, on the right you see task number 62 uh, define your future state um, then we have looked at the risks involved moving from your current state to your future state you have to identify them, you have to analyze them and manage them. And in the end, you need all these information to come up with 
um, a change strategy in which you have uh, considered multiple solution options and have chosen uh, one or two of them to uh, yeah, have that as a starting point for the rest of your business change. Yeah. Um, this is this sounds big. Uh, the most people I talk with say, well, I'm not doing strategy analysis because I'm not uh, sitting in the boardroom talking to CEOs. Uh, I, I can imagine that, but not all business changes will be this big. Uh, most of us will be involved in business change initiatives that have a much smaller impact on the on the enterprise. Um, you can think of a situation in which you want to increase your customer satisfaction, as uh, Luke told earlier, and this may lead to an implementation of a new CRM system and probably a new way of working. Both solution scope and change strategy will be much smaller and probably only the front office and IT staff personnel will be involved in these kind of changes. So. I think that's really important you you realize that um, strategy is not always about changing a whole company. <laughs> it may be also be uh, well, uh, somebody wants uh, um, somebody has a need in your organization and that will lead to a business change that is much smaller than uh, than the BCL case and then the Volkswagen case. Yeah, I think that's indeed a good point, right? That uh, strategy is often sounds scary and big, but uh, in the end, every BA uh, is part of it, uh, regardless if they want it or not. Uh, either you are influenced by it uh, because a project comes from it uh, or you're working on it. So I would always advise to uh, whenever a project starts, uh, ask also the reasoning behind it. Uh, okay, so which 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 strategies behind this project? What should it uh, resolve? I think that's a, an important part of uh, of a business analyst uh, doing project work as well. Exactly. Uh, well, that's uh, this slide says the same. Eh? So we have um, uh, put in this slide as a summary as well. Um, on the left, you see the bottom. So the the business analysis. Uh, uh, competence uh, model, uh, core competence model, uh, with the six elements, uh, changes, context, stakeholders, the blue triangles, and needs, solutions, and value, the, the orange ones, and they're all interrelated. Um, well, uh, concerning strategy analysis, which is about needs, of course, that's where we all started, we uh, come up with solutions to those needs. Uh, and of course, uh, these solutions uh, are only valuable when they add value, of course. Um, but who is um, capable of telling uh, whether a solution adds value to the company? That's, that are the stakeholders. So the stakeholders are involved uh, in defining the value. Uh, the stakeholder also... Um, <clears throat> are um, related to to the context and changes. So the uh, uh, um, imp implementing a solution to meet a business need, um, that um, means the, the company has to change and uh, that the key stakeholders need to be involved uh, within the, the, the context. And as I told you before, uh, those contexts can be very big. Uh, like BCL and, and Volkswagen, but oftentimes these <clears throat> sorry these contexts are are much smaller. Uh, but still, you have uh, stakeholders. Still, you have changes. Still, you have need solutions and and value. You need to uh, to monitor, and analyze and manage. So on the right, you see um, the summary of this knowledge area. <clears throat> On top, the needs where it all starts, influences. We saw those in the in the SWOT analysis. Uh, the stakeholder engagement approach, um, things you have uh, found during an elicitation, for instance, a workshop or interview, 
and some designs and requirements. And then you start doing your knowledge area strategy analysis and your output will be, um, well, the things we've seen in this chapter. Uh, and they, these you will need to make sure you do the right things when you start doing uh, the other knowledge areas, the tasks that fall within the other knowledge areas. Um, I uh, ask a question? Of course, uh, Lucien, yes. go ahead. Um, I was wondering um, whether you choose for approach top down or bottom up, or is it both ways to 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 uh, change to uh, to change uh, uh, to change the organization to the right direction? Good question. I think both. Uh, it's it's. I think it starts top down because uh, you need to have uh, a clear strategy. You need to have your business objectives. But also you learn as you do. So uh, I was talking before about the feedback loops. Um, I don't. We don't have the picture here, but in the last episode, you can check that on on YouTube. You had three levels. You had the strategy level, the initiative level, and you have the the, the delivery level. Uh, as you do within the delivery level, that could be a Scrum team, for instance you may learn things that you uh, move back as a, a feedback cycle up to your initiative level. So that's that's proj project level or, or program level. And even there, you can find uh, things that uh, may lead to um, things you learn, you can use at a strategy level. So I think that's the, that's the bottom up thing. So uh, I think it starts with uh, top down. If you don't have top down uh, objectives, where can you start? So I think it also always need to start with uh, the strategy level, uh, but it also depends on the size of your of your business change. So smaller business changes may be uh, may may start at a, an initiative level, or even at a at a de uh, delivery level. So That's the good. answer is is I would say yeah. both. Both are important. Yeah, yeah it definitely. Depends on the definitely. Size of the company. Sorry. And it and it depends on the size of the company and the impact of the change. Yes, yes. Uh, I've I've had a lot of uh, projects in which uh, I've been asked to um, to come up with some kind of system, and then I always ask uh, what what is the system used for. Why, why do you need the system? And then you, um, you need to, to relate the, the system within your business processes. So I think maybe that's a little bit, um, we, we, we skipped that, but we'll talk about that later uh, about business processes. Business processes are very important because they link your strategy to, uh, to your operations. So what does your organization do now? What does the organization need to do in the future? I mentioned that with BCL, of course, because you have a, a much different manufacturing process, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, they, those need to be related. So the people uh, in, the, in the factory need to know what to do. And those are your processes. And your processes need to be uh, traced to your uh, your strategy, of course, and your your business objectives. That's very important to to uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, and I think in the end, it doesn't really matter how big the company is, right? So if if you look at uh, one of the first uh, slides, uh, we can go maybe quickly go back uh, to where we talk about what is actually uh, strategy analysis, uh, where basically it, it's it's to provide direction, focus, and structure. Yeah, uh, exactly. And without direction, uh, without focus, and without structure, everybody would run around like, uh, well, call it a headless chicken. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, regardless of the size of the company, uh, people need to know, okay, are we going to uh, uh, build product A or are we going to build product B for a, a whole different market segment? Yeah. That is quite important because if you want to target all markets uh, at once with all products at the same time, well, I think that we all know that that is a recipe for... Uh, for disaster, but even if you're a smaller company and you have the same ambition to target all market segments, then you will also know that it's pro probably not 
feasible. Yeah? So um, the whole idea is that yes, top down, there should be coming direction, focus and structure from a certain strategy that has been set. But while executing these projects, so for instance, enter a new market, uh, that will probably go first with some analysis on that uh, certain market segments, which yeah. then will decide on whether that segment might not be the appropriate uh, segment to follow and uh, propose uh, an alternative, which that influences back or feedbacks back into the strategy decision making, which might then uh, result in, oh, okay, we will then change our strategy going forward instead of going to market X, we're going to market Y. Yeah, so it's all, yeah, basically in, in a loop and, and, and uh, companies that don't have that loop uh, will, uh, in the end, well, uh, we have some examples recently that are don't coming along with these new uh, uh, innovations uh, and, and new ways of thinking, which require new strategies, they will in the end fall down. Yeah. Mm. That's true, that's true. Uh, yeah, I, I heard somebody saying, uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't have to say that every plan is, 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 is perfect from the start. Yeah, so yes, it's a starting point, but it doesn't say it's perfect. It needs iteration. And that's why I, I think the uh, agile way of, of doing things is, uh, is helpful. Mm. So, Thank Certainly. You for the sake of the response. Yes. Pleasure. Okay. Yep. That, okay. Um, brings us to the end. I think we're perfectly on time again with this one hour bootcamp. Uh, so for, let me thank you also for your engagement, for the questions. Uh, I hope you have uh, learned a bit more about what is strategy analysis, hopefully demystified it a little bit that it's not only done in boardrooms and how it relates directly to your uh, work as well as a BA, regardless of not doing strategy analysis, but at least know how it can impact or influence your work you're doing within your uh, different uh, projects. So thank you very much. The next episode Thanks. we will be uh, having is uh, business analysis, planning and monitoring. So that we will focus more on how do you actually start yeah, the work as analyst when a new project uh, comes up. Yeah. Um, so I think a very interesting episode as well. Uh, we have some summer holidays coming up, so uh, we will probably be back in September. Uh, stay tuned. So we will keep you on the email list and inform you for every next uh, episode we will have. And uh, with that, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.